On today's show, my guest is the chairman and CEO of U.S. Nuclear Corp., Robert I. Goldstein. U.S. Nuclear Corp. trades on the OTC markets under the trading symbol UCLE. U.S. Nuclear Corp. is a publicly traded holding company with four subsidiaries specializing in designing and manufacturing radiation, chemical, and biological instrumentation and systems for nuclear power and nuclear medicine safety and air and water quality. Strategic partnerships further enhance U.S. Nuclear Corp.'s marketing outreach in UAV air forensics, fusion energy technology, medical isotopes, and brain-machine interface BMI technology. U.S. Nuclear is a spin-off of the World War II Manhattan Project, designing the earliest radiation detectors, now expanding to providing a wide range of handheld and drone-mounted detectors for all types of dangerous materials and pollutants, including toxic chemicals, biological hazards, also drugs such as fentanyl and explosives. An innovator and inventor, Mr. Goldstein's experience in the field of radiation measurement, detection, and monitoring includes the design and development of instrumentation for air, water, and surface applications. Miniature radiation detectors for use during surgery are just a sample of his many inventions and innovative designs. Aerial radiation and chemical detection via drone technology is an innovative and new field of detection, and it's where we're going to focus our attention in today's interview. I'd like to welcome onto the podcast Mr. Robert I. Goldstein. Bob, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, it's great. Great to see you and great to have this opportunity. Lots of uh, science in the uh, exposition there, and we're going to get into the details. We're going to focus today on the drone, on the drones that you're creating and the technology they're equipped with. Uh, so let's begin by getting into the field of aerial radiation and chemical detection via drone technology. Talk about the type of detectors that you're putting on the drones and, and how they're being utilized. Sure. So you covered some of them in your uh, in your intro, the uh, um, so there's various weapons of mass destruction which have to be checked at every border, and so that includes uh, radiation, chemical, and biological hazards, and explosives as well. And so we have a very wide suite of uh, dozens of uh, chemicals and uh, radioactive materials and toxins that we can detect with these sensors. So they're all, uh, of course, you have to make a few adjustments when you, uh, if so we also make doorway monitors and stuff like that, but those are heavier things. So if you want to put something on a drone, you got to make it lightweight. You got to make it out of carbon fiber instead of metal. And uh, so the lots of, uh, miniaturization challenges in there, which, but uh, these are, uh, anyway, so we can see almost any bad material, toxic, dangerous, or even just unhealthy materials that are in the air and uh, with these sensors. When did this, when did this technology start to come to uh, uh, the forefront of what people need to keep their workspace or their living space or or um, borders, or, or you know, when did this emerge onto the scene? And were you one of the first movers in this space? Absolutely. I think we were the very first ones to put uh, any radiation detectors on drones. You know, when drones were invented, they were just 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 a toy. You could play with them. Then, then of course, early on, people said, "Well, I could put a camera up there." So, but that's what when you say drone, you think of a flying camera. Yeah. That's what you think of. But, but in fact, the, uh, when you, uh, if you're sending, if you're, you know, a policeman or a fireman or whatever, and you get a report that there's been an explosion somewhere, then you want to go out there and see what it is. And if you just go there and snap some pictures or take a video, how much help is that? Or you see some smoke, but with our with our systems, you can fly right into the smoke and say, "Well, this is what's burning," you know, and and uh, and there can be um, what obstacles, you know, if there's an explosion, there's probably uh, rubble around there, and you you can't drive your squad car up next to it, uh, and maybe there's a fence around it. The drone goes right over there, so. 
I think we've always needed this, but we didn't we didn't have it. You know, previously, if something strange was going on, you'd send a helicopter. Mm-hmm. But, uh, that's sort of expensive. And also, the guy driving the copter, he doesn't want to fly into a radioactive smoke cloud. So, so this is better for everybody. So the term loaded drone is referring to the measurement and uh, analysis equipment that the drone is actually carrying. Right. Yeah. It's a, we consider them forensic uh, detectors. And we're, it's just like sending a team of of, uh, of detectives out to the, a team out to the uh, site that you're looking at. And uh, so you can also, um, I want to talk for a minute about border security. Sure. So the border, at the border, you know, the guys that are checking you out there, they have some maybe uh, conveyor belts that uh, you can put your luggage on. They have uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, metal detectors that you walk between, things like that. But, and that's that's a stationary equipment and they may have some handheld things. But what about the guys, the, the line of cars that are waiting to come across the border? What about that, that guy over there that's, that's sprinting is <laughs> sprinting towards towards the fence. So with a drone, you can check those, pre-check the cars that are waiting in line. You can uh, uh, even if they're out of sight, you can suppose you get a, a word that there's a a bunch of um, uh, a military looking squad coming in your way, and they're ten five miles away or whatever. You could go out and see where they are see where they're coming. Whereas if you just have fixed detectors, uh, you can't do that. There's a lot of good information on the website, usnuclearcorp.com, video information, a lot of good photography from locations that you've worked at. Can you give us an example of a a recent case study potentially where the drones were utilized and what they were carrying and what kind of, uh, what kind of mission they, uh, they accomplished? Yes. So the, um, uh, this was, uh, aerial, situation when there was a, uh, a plane had just landed and the uh, it was uh, suspected of having uh, radioactive materials in it and so it was uh, uh, when it was down on the tarmac we were able to uh, do a complete uh, flyover you know back and forth flyover to find out just where the radioactivity was, yeah. Excellent. So that's that's an example of how these drones are being used to protect the general public, border security. Now, how did these? How does this technology get into the hands of the people who who need to be utilizing it? In other words, what's the marketing and sales effort of the company to get this technology into the hands of people who might not be aware of it, but who could definitely utilize it for public safety and beyond? Well, that's that's the. Uh... The responsibility of our salespeople, I guess, but uh, we, as you may know, we do press releases, and we we have a very active sales department, and we try to let the public know what it is we can do and and why we why they should be interested. It's not the sort of technology that someone could purchase independently and then affix to their own drone. It's always a package deal. Um. We like to sell the uh, the detectors uh, and the drone together because not every drone has a mounting uh, mounting clips or whatever, and uh, also the um, and uh, you need it. We're you know we're in constant radio communication with our ground base when we're flying these these things. So if you if you just buy buy a detector and then sort of stick it to the drone, it doesn't doesn't get your full services that you wanted. Got it. When I was looking at the website, I went to uh, the Cali from Above page. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that operation? And, you know, being based here in Los Angeles, it was of particular interest to me. So uh, what's Cali from Above all about? So that's primarily a service organization. So we go around the country and, and other countries, too, and train pilots how to use their use their drones you know everybody sorry, um, 
uh, everybody who wants a drone has bought a drone by now, but the uh, but we can train them how to use it and how to make it uh, a defense tool, a safety tool. Got it. And, and that program is focused on California right now. Right. But we, as I said, we, we've uh, trained policemen and firemen all around the, the country. And we also, uh, we're also introducing a new service. It's sort of a nighttime service. Uh, we, if you have a police, you're, you're, you have a police station and during the night, uh, you know, they get calls. I heard a sound, you know, or there was an explosion at, near my house at such and such street. So in that case, they don't really want to send a squad car. Uh, it doesn't sound maybe that serious, but it could be. But so they have sometimes uh, a drone station, landing station on their on their roof. And and they send the drone out from that point and do a little investigation and then record the results we also have microphones on the drone so you can hear what's going on and so uh we're working to provide that kind of service to individual police stations and fire stations you know as our audience is made up primarily of uh, potential investors and people who are working in the investing space before we conclude are there any upcoming catalysts for u.s nuclear corp that you'd like our audience to know about Good question. So the um, uh, we're looking for additional partners, uh, and so to to both help us market our products, but also uh, to uh, perhaps uh, join with us to make a bigger company. And so I think that uh, there's. There's good things happening in the future. Well, hopefully you'll come back and tell us all about it. My guest has been the chairman and CEO of U.S. Nuclear Corp. Robert I. Goldstein. And U.S. Nuclear Corp. trades on the OTC markets under the trading symbol UCLE. For more information on the company, you can visit them online at usnuclearcorp.com. Bob, I'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of news to talk about Shortly, it's a rapidly and ever-evolving world of aerial robotics and protecting the air quality, protecting the environment, protecting the, the public at large. I hope you'll come back and join me for another update very soon. Oh, looking forward to it. That's great. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Spotlight Media Corporation, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when investing to determine investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional.